Have you ever thought about what it means to live a life that is dedicated to the Lord? Today, that's what I want to talk about. As we go into this new year, it helps us to focus on the newness of life. So if you're not subscribed to this channel yet, please subscribe so that you don't miss when I post an encouraging word, which happens every Wednesday. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciled the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. You know, the new has come. Not just a new year, but when we are believers in Jesus Christ, we are created anew through our relationship, through our reconciliation with God, through our relationship with Jesus Christ. This transformation is not instantaneous. We have to go through a development process as Christians so that the influence we have on the world around us will be a godly influence, one that displays love, joy, peace, patience, forgiveness, and kindness. It's called growing and maturing in Christ. James 1.4 says, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. That development process, it takes time and effort, time in his word, and time fellowshipping with other believers. We need each other in this process. An isolated Christian is a powerless Christian. Since iron sharpens iron, as Proverbs 27, 17 says, we need to be around other believers as we grow and mature in Christ. We need to be conscious of ourself because every interaction we have is either drawing others to Christ or pushing them away from him. It's not fair or right, but Christians are judged by non-believers all the time. They watch us closely to see if we react to things in a negative way. They watch us to see how we react under pressure. And sometimes life gives us reasons to react harshly, but we have to remember who we are representing we only get looked at by unbelievers because they hope and want to believe that Jesus Christ is who he says he is and he can do what he says he can do in people's lives. You know, I've had the privilege, you know, if you really want to call it that, but I've had the privilege to experience two separate situations in the last few weeks. First, I listened to a group of non-believers and what they had to say about someone they had heard came to the Lord. You know, they talked about how he didn't seem different and how they didn't know if it had really happened or not, if he had really become a believer or not. Church, listen, we are called to be different from the world. It's called being set apart. First Peter 2 9 says, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. He calls us out of darkness. When believers come out from among the world, and live holy lives in the company of the unsaved, the difference between the two should be 
evident and they know it and so do we. The second situation involved a major situation that happened earlier this week and it involved the two groups again and the believers didn't get it right and the situation was dark and it needed some light. We must be shining the light of Jesus Christ in the dark world. We are literally light missionaries everywhere we go. You know, just because we don't travel abroad doesn't mean that we're not missionaries. We are. And people in the dark look to light for guidance. It means that we can't just be light bearers only on Sunday mornings. We cannot be selective about where or with whom we share the love of Christ with. John 1 5 says the light shines in the darkness in the darkness has not overcome it. Jesus Christ is the light of the world based on John 8 12. We must take the responsibility of being light bearers with us everywhere we go and share it with each other, share it with the individuals we come in contact with for Christ alone. We don't do it out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, like the word says. We do it for Christ alone. You know, and this won't happen by chance either. If we allow ourselves to be passive and to go with the flow and be the type of people who just assume victory in Christ is going to happen, then we're not going to be living in that flow, that victory flow with Christ. We must be people who live our lives by choice, not by chance. It's a choice we make to share the light with others or not. It's literally our choice to act in accordance with scripture or not. I've heard it said that by your choices or actions, you are either doing the work of the devil or you're doing the work of the Lord. You know, I'm preaching myself here as well. I am always actually preaching to myself. When I give these messages, these are from a place of what I'm literally going through, have been through, and the Lord has really equipped me to bring the message to others because I have walked through it myself. You know, if we are used mightily by God as an instrument of change in our world, we must make a firm resolution to do God's will as it is revealed to us. We must submit our wills to his. We can't just wing it anymore. We have to be resolved. I delivered a message about being resolved earlier this week, and I'll place a link to it up here just in case you want to go to that. And I believe we need to be resolved in our relationship with the Lord in order to grow a deep personal relationship with him. Because once we become believers, we take on the responsibility to plant seeds of hope, to plant seeds of forgiveness and seeds of self-control. And we are called to take that light into this dark world by the words we use and by our actions sometimes. But we must refuse to quit when things get tough. Listen, Philippians 1 6 says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. We do what he tells us to do in his word, in the power, in the prompting of the Holy Spirit will let God shine through us. We must let God do what only he can do with the seeds that we are called to plant. We're called to plant seeds, but the harvest belongs to the Lord. We desire to share him with others because of the transformation we ourselves have experienced with him. He makes us bold and courageous in the darkness, and we take steps of faith to follow him. Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
that by testing, you may discern what the will of God is, what is good and acceptable and perfect. And this is the process that I'm talking about that takes time and effort on our part as we dedicate ourselves to God this year and to his word and become lights. He chose us to be lights at such a time as this. It is a Christian's compassion, their love, and their genuine concern for others expressed in action that draws others to Christ. We need to ask God to give us his compassion in love for others, his understanding of where they're coming from. And we need to ask him to let us see the beauty in them just as he sees the beauty in us. Sometimes people are not that easy to love. I'm sure I don't have to tell you that, but they're not eager to accept our light either because they are so submerged in darkness, but God can make a way because God calls us into these relationships for his purposes and we must be obedient to him. We must remember that nothing is impossible with Christ. Mark 10, 27 says, with man, it is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. And Luke 18, 27 says, what is impossible with man is possible with God. It's only through our personal relationship with Jesus Christ that we can unconditionally love the others in our life, right? God calls us to do life with each other, to pray for each other, to encourage each other, and to bear each other's burdens. It's in Galatians 6, 2, where we read to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ, regardless of where we are or what situation we find ourselves in. God's decision is the bottom line. We don't have the final say over anyone, and we must accept that. We must allow God to be God and do the things that we were never called to do and the things that we can not do without him. We can pray, but he determines the outcome. We have to give him the privilege without resenting, without finding fault or getting angry with him. Pray for others in your life, but leave the outcome to God. The outcome is God's responsibility, okay? Obedience is ours. The efforts we make are indeed necessary and vital, but the final examination, the results belong to God. As 1 Corinthians 2.2 2 says, For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ in him crucified. Praise God. It is the job of of the Holy Spirit to convince the listeners. We so desperately want to see people changed right in front of us. We want to see evidence of Jesus Christ working out in the fine details of our pursuits to love others before we make the decision to walk wholeheartedly with them. But it doesn't happen that way. He calls us. And we must make our decision to follow him just as we are and just as they are. Faith means that we walk by belief, not by our sight. I swear, I feel like I mess up all the time, every single day. But I refuse to give up. God finishes what he starts. Philippians 1.6 says, Be confident of this that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. The Lord has a plan for you, and he has a plan for me, and he has a plan for right where we are. There are people in our life whose salvation depends solely upon us sharing the gospel with them. No, we're not going to be the ones who ultimately save them. That's the Holy Spirit's job. But we are the ones who are called to share the gospel with them. And, you know, Jesus, he never went 
after large crowds of people. He invested in the people he came in contact with. That's the big difference between quantity and quality. God has placed you and I where we're at right now for a reason. And maybe it's just for a season. We truly don't know how long we have here or how long we have in any given situation or circumstance or relationship. The change of life is always in motion. Through our dedication, we will continue to grow. Associate in work with other believers who share your enthusiasm to win their people for Christ. Fellow believers are our support system. Let's trust and depend on each other. Let's strengthen and build each other up. In just the same way, we are called to live in obedience as an act of honor toward the one who sees us, the one who saves us, the one who loves us with an everlasting love. Obedience to God is our faith in action. The overflow of our love and our gratefulness. God is glorified when we live every day aware and changed by his presence. We will never get to a place where our character lacks room for improvement, that's for sure. Choosing to live for the glory of God is a choice we make with our minds as God works out the finer details in our hearts. Matthew 5.16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. We must be in the word and trust that he will give us the wisdom in the words necessary. Know that our Father is not willing for anyone to perish, but for all to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. He wants our world to know Jesus. In the darkness, we can persist in shining our light for Christ through our obedience to him in his word. The setting of our minds to do so is opposite of mental coasting. We have the mind of Christ and it's very powerful. It is a conscious choice to direct our minds, to take every thought captive and to make it obedient to Christ. Praise God for the power of the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of us, who make things possible that would otherwise be impossible for us. Even at such a time as this, I know it's dark, but we can carry the light of the world with us wherever we go as long as we carry the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. Jesus Christ is with us and he wants us to shine his love for others so that others will know that he exists. Amen. I hope that word encouraged you. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your word, Lord. We thank you that you have chosen us, that you want us to do your kingdom work here on earth, Lord. And we thank you that you gave us the Holy Spirit to help us accomplish everything that you want us to. So Lord, strengthen us. Lord, strengthen us as we go into this new year that uh, we would just commit our lives to you, Lord, and that we would allow you to be glorified by the choices and decisions that we make by choice, not by chance. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I hope that word encourages you. And if uh, you're not subscribed here, please subscribe so you don't miss an encouraging word. And like and share this so that others can join our community. And we can just keep building this community as we go into the new year. All right. Take care. God bless.